We're driving a 2022 Ford Maverick. Coming up, we're gonna discuss whether or not a little pickup truck like this can be family friendly. But first, information explosion. Let's start with interior. Sweetie, what do you think about the interior of the Ford Maverick? I really like it. It feels like they've taken a lot of risks here and it pays off. Like this bold orange color, this very um, odd diamond pattern here. They've taken what are objectively cheap materials and made them super interesting and compelling. If you can't be expensive, at least be interesting. As far as space is concerned, so it's a compact pickup truck, but I can sit behind myself just fine. Um, there's enough knee clearance, not a ton of knee clearance, but plenty, but headroom is great, which is a little surprising too, because one of my complaints is that the rear seat back is pretty darn vertical. I like to sit upright, so just put me in the back. Oh, okay. If you have excellent posture, in the back you go. What about getting our kid in and out? The ride height of this is low enough that she can step in fairly easily, and I'm also able to reach over her easily. So, yeah, getting great. the seatbelt on like was really simple because you can just step a foot in, and I think if you were willing to slide the front seat forward just a little bit, you could put a rear-facing uh, child seat in the, the back there without too much issue. I think it's very accommodating for parents. We gotta talk about the bed, though. I'm suddenly getting rained on. That was weird. <laughs> that was weird. I think a tree peed on us. <laughs> what? You didn't know trees peed? No. They don't pee. <laughs> the bed, it's a four and a half foot bed. You can uh, put up to 1,500 pounds of payload um, total in the bed. Uh, you've got D-rings and uh, tie downs. So there's a little storage nook on the right side of the bed. There's available uh, power in the back. So if you have like an e-bike, you can charge it up back there. They have this standard E-D-I-Y electrical connector set up on either side of the bed. So you can kind of do your own electrical wiring to add whatever you want to power. What would you power in the back of your Maverick? Tell us in the comments. And then they've got these slat um, holes, I guess, that uh, you can put two by fours or uh, uh, you know, two by sixes, and you can create like a false floor, or you can create uh, dividers in the bed. Um, there's a ton of flexibility, and Ford has like a QR code back there that you can scan, and that'll take you to a page where they give you all this detail on like things you can make, like oh, you can make your own bike rack, um, and it's like you know, 40 bucks worth of parts or something like that, and a hunk of wood. Oh, and then the tailgate is definitely not damped, but you can do it in a two position uh, setup. Uh, so you can like keep stuff from sliding out by kind of angling up the back a little bit. There's so much functionality back there. I It feels like I've been talking forever. <laughs> it and feels like it, that to me too. Yeah, because, I, and because it's me, it feels <laughs> twice as long as it actually has been. <laughs> and now just to give people a break from all the mica talking, tell me, sometimes bed sides are so high mm. that you can't really get over that. Any issues? Oh, it was great. I used it when I was shooting the Maverick to store all my stuff. As long as what I'm putting in there isn't flat, like a backpack, super easy, but I might have trouble at getting a phone. I'm going to have to climb card. in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and because you guys are going to ask in the comments, how tall are you? I'm 5'2". Five 5'2". Two. Five two. Actually, I'm five one and a half, but I round up. I don't know. <laughs> Oh yeah, one more bed thing. Um, if you want a drink and then a friend also wants a drink at the exact same time, there are two bottle openers. Woohoo! Supplementing all the cargo space in the bed, the interior has a ton of cargo space. So there's a, an under seat storage area in the back. Some of that space is taken up with the hybrids battery. So you get a little bit more space if you go with the non-hybrid EcoBoost version, but uh, you noticed something with the, the, that access. You can flip the seat up and access that area, which is fantastic. But if you have a car seat installed, they are not split folding. So you have to remove the car seat and the kid, probably, in order to access that space. 
That said, elsewhere throughout the interior, there's all sorts of little storage spots. There's a spot right up here on the dash where my sunglass case would go if it wasn't such a foggy day. There's this spot here that Evie doesn't think anything should go into, but I bet you can figure out something. Yes, tell me what I should put there. There's this little slot right here, like if you have a parking ticket or something like that. So we're a little bit split here on door functionality. They kind of um, made it this pass-through space. So if you have a really big bottle, you can put at, put that in the door and there's just some, um, it kind of goes back far. I feel like I haven't fully grasped the ways I can use the door, you had an issue then. So it's great because you are always carrying a large water and I am always carrying a large cup of coffee. The water fits fantastic, but my coffee mug, I had set it in the back one and driven a little bit and it flopped right out. And if the lid hadn't been locked, it would have gotten coffee everywhere. You've been warned. Yes. <laughs> Cup holders here, cup holders in the rear uh, armrest, which is something that our Bronco doesn't have. There's all sorts of little spots that um, if you have stuff, you can put your stuff in here. And then as far as safety, seven airbags come standard, including a driver's side knee airbag, along with automatic emergency braking. So family, overall, what do we think? Is the Ford Maverick, despite its compact designation, family friendly? Family yeah. friendly. Yeah, I think it's family friendly. Rear window test. No, not that rear window test. Other rear window test. Yay, all the way down. Yeah, that's the stuff. Armrest test. So, driving in a comfortable eight and four, the outboard armrest is very squishy, so that's an accommodating place. Inboard, though, you've got stitching, which is very, very lightly abrasive, but the real problem is that underneath it, there's this hard plastic bit that makes that an uncomfortable perch for my inboard. I'm gonna go three quarters up on the outboard, but only uh, a quarter up on the uh, inboard. Hey, have you subscribed to our channel? If you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, we're gonna review a windowless white van. Style! I bet you have thoughts. What do you think of the style of Ford Maverick, baby? It's so cute. It's its small size, and the fact that there's that black plastic along the bed, it makes it almost look like a cartoon character. I really like it. It is super adorable, especially if you add um, cartoon eyes in your Instagram feed. That really enhances <laughs> its cuteness. It's a fairly minimalist approach. If you compare it to, let's say, the uh, Hyundai Santa Cruz, you're getting a lot of style for your dollar there, whereas this is a simpler design that I think will probably have a little bit greater longevity. Mm. What do you guys think? Do you like the look of the Ford Maverick? If so, tell us in the comment section. And if you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram. She's mostly humans and cats. I'm mostly cars and uh, helicopters. And I'm mostly unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> it's true. true. Moving on, in motion. This feels very much like driving an SUV. You would not know that you're driving a pickup truck unless you look out back and you see that little slidey slide window. Ride quality and interior quiet for a vehicle with a starting price under $20,000. Forget the pickup truck stuff. This feels really nice. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> As for steering, um, I think the steering feels just fine. <laughs> it's, it's almost unremarkable. Oh, how convenient. We're coming to a stop, and then from the stop, I'm going to floor it. As I floor it. Whee! Yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh, got a little bit of tire spin ooh. as I went over uh, that little uh, section of uh, pavement on the right there. Yeah, I think it's approaching zippy territory, which is great for the standard powertrain. This is the hybrid, but you get that instant torque, and I, I think it feels great. And the other thing I really like, too, is that the power handoff between the electric side and the gasoline-powered side is completely seamless. You just don't think about it. Until you turn on the car and, and it feels like nothing happens. Feels like nothing happens. I, I, that's a really excellent point. Yeah, every time I get in, I want some sort of acknowledgement that the thing has actually started. Yeah. Ford, if I can make a suggestion, give me some cue that the vehicle has started. <laughs> hey, I'm up, bro. Let's drive. <laughs> All right, you know what I think, but what does Sweetie think? Sweetie's at the wheel, and we're approaching a stop sign here. Tell me, Sweetie, as we drive into this guy's um, smoky exhaust, how are the brakes? The brakes are applied 
very quickly at the top of the pedal. My Bronco, I really have to mash it. So the first time I stopped in this car, I am so lucky there was no one behind me because I went douche. You went douche? <laughs> I did. What sound do you make when you brake too hard? Anything but Tell that. us in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> what I noticed about the brakes was something very similar. I described I describe them as like touchy and spongy, which I thought is kind of like SpongeBob on crack. Like yeah. uh, the hybrid brakes are a blended braking solution where it's blending regenerative brakes and friction brakes, and it's not doing a very good job of it. So in this vehicle, it definitely takes an adaptation. And even after driving it a little while, it's hard to get the right amount of braking that you want. If you yeah. want to avoid all of that, just don't get the hybrid. The hybrid comes standard. Just get the, uh, the EcoBoost engine and you'll have normal feeling brakes. What about visibility? Visibility is okay. The part I don't like, because we're always on very windy roads, this thick A-pillar and this chunk here makes it difficult to see through a long corner. That is a very thick A. Some people are into that, but in this situation, <laughs> you are not. Visibility issues aside, how do you like driving the Maverick? I like it. It's small, it's manageable, the touchy brakes and visibility aside. It's not blowing your skirt up, but it's a perfectly <laughs> reasonable way to drive a truck around. And Jeepers, that fuel economy is great. And we're gonna get to that in a little bit more detail in a moment, but I'm gonna get back in the seat first. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, sweetie. I think overall, the Maverick is a very nice driving pickup truck. Next up, emotion factor. Sweetie, do you think there's an emotion factor here? There is a strong emotion factor, which is a big surprise for me. It just being a little value-oriented pickup truck. Mm -hmm. The style of it is really compelling. Yeah. The functionality that you are encouraged to adapt to your own need is very compelling. And I will also add that um, they have really worked hard to make a ton of accessories available so you can customize it, make it your own. And nothing kind of gives you that emotional hook with a vehicle than knowing that it's not just a one of the many Mavericks, but it's your Maverick. And there are so many ways to customize it. Another way they encourage you to make it your own is that little slot where you can add your own 3D printed accessories. I haven't seen that in any other vehicle. Yeah, Ford actually has a bunch of designs that you can download for accessories that you can um, pop into those slots. So you can be creative and add your own. You can just sort of print out the ones that they already have if you want a cup holder. I can't think of anything besides a cup holder, but I'm not a guy who has the 3D printer. You're probably more clever than I am, but yeah, I think that that really adds to the emotion factor. If you're feeling emotionally moved to buy a Ford Maverick of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below. Remarks! Remark number one, fuel economy. Sweetie, did you look at the outline I put together? Yes, I did. That's incredible fuel economy. It is 42 MPG city. That's actually better than Ford thought. They kept saying it was going to be 40-ish, and 42 is insane. We did a little video a while back with the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid, and people were like, why didn't you talk about fuel economy? A large part of it is how we use it, and it's not representative necessarily of how other people will use it. But just so you know, I've been getting 27.5 MPG, driving at um, low Earth orbit speeds on the freeway, and then driving <laughs> up a mountain. So that's not representative of what you would normally do. But when I got in, it was like uh, 36, 37 MPG on the uh, onboard computer. All of that to say that this is a very, very efficient vehicle. If you forget the bed, just compare this to like a, a sub $20,000 car. And this is one of your most efficient choices. Wow. Also, it's a pickup truck. Now, if you don't care about fuel economy, your engine choice, they uh, make a two liter EcoBoost engine, which is the Power Fiend's choice and also your only choice if you want all-wheel drive. If you want an all-wheel drive hybrid, everybody scream real loud, and maybe Ford will hear you. <laughs> yeah. Are you screaming for a hybrid uh, all-wheel drive? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> She's getting the movement started, man. Two quick supplemental notes. If you want all of the power that's uh, listed for the hybrid, you have to use premium fuel. And if you get all-wheel drive, that's going to knock your fuel economy down by one MPG in both the city and in the highway. Also, you have to get the uh, all-wheel drive uh, EcoBoost if you want the FX4 package, which is the off-road package, and that makes perfect sense to me. And it's not too expensive. You get some skid plates and some tow hooks. Uh, you get a few different drive modes, and you get the all-important FX4 stickers on the <laughs> bed so people know that you're about ready to live that rugged off-road life as long as um, it's not too rugged. <laughs> 
One more powertrain note, if you want to tow with your Maverick, uh, 1,500 pounds is the standard, but the hybrid can tow up to 2,000 pounds when uh, appropriately equipped, and the EcoBoost can tow up to 4,000 pounds if you get the 4K tow package, which I think is reasonable for a little truck like this. Let's talk about infotainment. What do you think? It's so simple. There just isn't a lot happening here, but it's easy to access what is there. And to me, the 8-inch touchscreen seems generous enough. You are an astute observer. This is actually the older system. This is Sync 3, not Sync 4. So mm. Sync 4 looks a little bit more slick with its design. And Sync 4 also has wireless um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto functionality and over-the-air updates. None of that stuff comes on this one. <laughs> Rather than thinking about this as a way that Ford cheaped out, think about this as a way that Ford cheaped out, wherein <laughs> they uh, uh, make this available at the price it is by making certain accommodations. Mm. I'm okay with that. Um, this will be your opportunity to uh, leave remarks in the comment section pointing out how stupid that is. By the way, if you were getting fancy vibes from us, it is true, we have the XLT Luxury Package, which adds things like heated seats, heated steering wheel, a power driver's seat, a spring and bed liner, a tow hitch with the four pin connector. We also have the $540 Ford 360 Copilot 360, I'm saying too many words. <laughs> Add turbo on there, that makes it more fun. 360 Turbo <laughs> Assist Turbo. Anyways, it's a $540 package that adds lane keeping assist, which automatically steers the vehicle back into its lane if you go over the line and blind spot warning which is something i know you appreciate because you love visibility mm -hmm. and when you can't have visibility you will accept technology <laughs> one complaint though let me complain you ready for a complaint here it comes do you like cruise control sure I we all do <laughs> okay you can't get cruise control on the xl trim what period the base trim you cannot get uh cruise control so that enticing price it's enticing but uh, just know that it comes at a cost which is ironic <laughs> so if you want cruise control, you have to step up at least to the XLT, which is a great lead into, can I make a trim suggestion? Yes. You know I'm a cheap I will go for the cheapest trim possible that gets the basic equipment that I think is a necessity. One item I think is a necessity now is smart key access. Mm -hmm. um, they call it like intelligent key, I believe, um, for Ford. You can't get that on anything but the absolute highest Lariat trim. No way, that stings. So I, if I were buying a Maverick, I would have to buy the Lariat because I refuse to reach in my pocket and get the key out and then turn it every single time. This is, I can't remember the last time I had a press card that had that. It's so weird using a key and putting it in and turning it ignition. As for the competitive set, basically one vehicle. The, uh, <laughs> on the Santa Cruz. I don't know, maybe we should get a Santa Cruz in, su in some time and uh, maybe uh, do a little bit of a uh, retrospective comparison. That's a really good idea. The Santa Cruz is so cute. All right, I think we've kind of gone through all the details. Uh, are there any remarks we missed? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Ford Maverick, it is cheap. It is practical. I've probably used this one before, but it is the Evi Musio of uh, <laughs> pickup trucks. Just a tiny little thing, and it's just here to help. Ooh, plus it has kind of a crafty vibe to it with all the DIY elements. Definitely. This is the Evi Musio of compact pickup trucks. Hooray. Do you guys have a better synopsis? If so, tell us in the comments section. If you'd like to see what we're doing between YouTube videos, give us a follow over on Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed, feel free to do so at 100,000 subs, which is coming up really quickly. I think we're going to review a windowless white van. Family, I think we did a great job reviewing the Ford Maverick. Can I have some fives? You and you can get your high five. Ah.